Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here, welcome to the channel, and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. We continued our background campaign of Hero Realms last week, so now we're going to step out of that this week. This week we're back in a very familiar setting, but we're on the other side as we play Fate of the Elder Gods. Unlike almost every other game in the Cthulhu Mythos, our goal here is to summon whatever god we're playing with instead of stopping the summoning or trying to push the Ancient One back. We lose in one of two ways, if our summoning track gets filled with Elder Signs or if we end up with five Curses. Curses function slightly differently in the solo game from the regular game, but I won't get into that here. I do have some ways I could use this game on the channel, but I won't get into those right now either. This game will serve as a quasi-test recording for those ideas, and I might talk about that a little bit more at the end of the video, but more on that later. Anyway. Let's start off and we'll take a look at the god that we're trying to summon today. The god that we're trying to summon today is the king in yellow, Haster. I'm doing everything in red today. I know it would be it's a slight thematic fail to not do everything with Haster in yellow, but seeing as red is my favorite color and I'm playing a solo game right now, we'll just stick with doing everything in red. So I'm starting off with my summoning track at zero. Our goal to win the game is to get our summoning track over here by moving in the clockwise direction. Elder signs as we gain them will be moving counterclockwise. So if we end up with getting an elder sign up here, we start from the nine. So if we get the elder signs all the way around, our elder god is sealed away and we lose the game. As I mentioned earlier, we also lose the game if we end up with five curses. But anyway, I start off with seven, we start off with seven cultists in the Lodge. I'll mention where the rest of the cultists are when we move over to the board, but we'll take a quick look at Haster's special ability, aka his dark gift. Dance of the Outer Gods. Starting from the ceremony and proceeding clockwise, you may roll one die for each location on the altar where you have a cultist present. That's what that symbol is there. For each tentacle or Cthulhu, place one investigator from your lodge on that location and move one investigator there to any other location. So this is probably a good time to take a quick look at the dice. So on here, we have various symbols. So we have, so that symbol is known as a lesser elder sign and we have two of those on here. That's a greater elder sign where some of the effects might be more powerful depending on which kind of elder sign you roll. Then we have two tentacles which are the effects that we want to see. So this is one rare game where we want to be tentacle touched and we don't want to see Elder Signs. Then we have the Cthulhu, which similar to rolling the lesser Elder Sign versus the greater Elder Sign, the Cthulhu roll versus the tentacle makes our effect slightly more powerful. I'll talk a little bit more about that when we get deeper into the game as they come up. The one thing I'll talk about now with those is when we are rolling for temporary control, and I'll explain more about that when it actually happens, we need a Cthulhu roll to get temporary control of the location to get a stronger action out of it. But anyway, we also start off with a hand of three cards. So we'll be using the astral symbols on the backs of these cards to move locations. And I'll talk more about that when we actually get into the game. So these actually represent spells as well. Our first card with a blue marker on it the stars are right, so assign each cult, including yours, one of the following. Lose one Elder Sign, gain two cultists from the Abyss, gain two Investigators, become Cursed. So the Astral Symbols at the top here are what you need on your location at the end of the turn to prepare the spell. So for this spell we would need a white and two yellow icons, and the Astral Symbols on the locations count, and I'll explain more about that when we look at the board. So on a white astral symbol, we have an ancient stirring. So three on, so three white to prepare that. An ancient stirring. Advance one on the summon track. So we just go up one here. 
You may sacrifice one of your cultists at the current altar location to advance one more on your summon track. And then on a green symbol, if this is a bad spell, I may use this to move right away. But again, we'll, I'll explain more about why when we move over to the board. Which is cursed. You need a white and a red icon. Which is cursed. Choose a cult. That cult becomes cursed. In the solo game, that's absolutely useless, so I think that will probably be my first move. And then you can see also that we have the actual symbol on the back. Uh, the symbol that's on the back is down here about a third of the way down on the card. So I, don't have to, so I won't have to keep flipping back and forth to see what astral symbols I have in my hand. But anyway, that will do it for the initial prep for Haster. Now let's move over to the board and take our first look. Alright, so we've got the board set up. We've got two fate pieces which are used in the solo game. I'll be doing everything using the dark green Cthulhu mini. The investigators will be controlling the light gray, the gray Cthulhu mini. So our goal is to get our cultist up to the other world's location, which is where we can try to advance on the summoning track. So we sacrifice cultists and gain summon points. The control location there is for each... Let me double check that. Oh, yes. So for each Cthulhu we roll on the summoning, on the die to try to sacrifice the cultist, we actually get a cultist back per Cthulhu symbol that we roll. We only sacrifice on a tentacle. So that'll be when we have control of that location. And then I'll move the fate piece away briefly so we can see that the astral symbols on the board correspond to what we have for the spells. So in this case, at the other world, the purple marker can be used for any symbol, plus we have a white there. So we can keep that in, keep that in the back of, the, of our mind. Moving in a clockwise fashion, we have the museum, where we get to pick up one of these two artifacts. I'll go through those in a second. If we get to the library and we manage, not the library, the museum, and we have control, control of that, we can discard and replace the artifact deck. We're going to replace the artifact display. Sacrifice up to three cultists from the museum to destroy one elder sign from any lodge for each cultist sacrificed this way. Let's take a look at our starting uh, artifact. We have the Skull of Lore, so we can exhaust it to roll one die. If we roll a cultist, we discard the Skull of Lore and it's the Skull of Lore, and we advance one on the summoning track. But if we roll a greater elder sign, we become cursed. Then the other artifact is true magic. We can exhaust this to draw, discard a spell in your reserve, then draw the top spell from the spell deck and immediately ready it for free. So I kind of glossed over this when I was when we were looking at the board. But if you saw, there are three, there are a one, two, and a three space on your summoning board. In fact, let me move back over there for a second. So as we move back to Haster, you see the one, two, and three icons up here. That means we can prepare up to three spells for free. Or pre prepare, have three, up to three spells prepared. We'll pre talk about how we can prepare spells for free later on when we go to the board. But anyway, let's move back to the board. Okay, so that was a quick little detour to explain a little bit more about the spells. But anyway, the museum has a blue marker on it, and then we start with a red spell, with a red spell face down at the location. Continuing in our clockwise fashion, we advance to the ceremony, where we get, where when we go travel there, we'd use a, we'd have to use a white card to travel to it. But if we go there, we get our cultists, our god's special ability. In this case, we talked about the dance of the outer gods already and we gain a gate card. Now the gate cards are powerful because you can use those to travel everywhere, anywhere on the board you want. And they're the only way you can get, well, they're the easiest way you can get to the other worlds. You can also use two of the same matching icons as a, as a travel anywhere location. So you place, so you have a white icon there to start with and it has an additional yellow there. We'll tip this down just a touch. There we go. I'm going to be doing a little bit of tipping here. But anyway, 
Then we move to the streets of Arkham, which is where the investigators start. So in the normal game, you would give two investigators to another lodge and initiate a raid against them. I'll talk more about what, a, what happens with a raid when it actually happens. But for the solo game, if the investigators move to the streets of Arkham, it's basically a blank space where nothing happens there. Right? Yes. They never perform... Okay, never mind. They never perform location actions, but if they move to the streets of Arkham, then a raid happens immediately. Now, again, I'll talk more about that when it happens. So, but when I go there to perform the Streets of Arkham location action, I return two investigators from my lodge back to the supply. If I have control of the, the location, whether through temporary or having at least three cultists and more than the investigators, I can sacrifice one cultist from there to remove an additional, an, an additional cultist from the location. So I need a yellow card to travel to it, and it starts with a blue on the location. Then looking at the gathering over here, this I might be moving to right away, because this gives me three cultists from the abyss, which is the middle of the board. You see, and I should probably talk about that quickly, where in addition to the seven cultists I start with in the lodge, there are seven cultists from my cult in the abyss, and I've got one in each location, plus one investigator at each location. I'll be putting more of those out as I move around to those locations. But anyway, Going to the Gathering means I get to gain three cultists from the Abyss and then move one from that location to a location of my choosing. If I have control, I can move any number of... I can move any number of those cultists over to whatever location I want. In case there's something where I need to get control of it. I would need a green card to travel to it. And there's another green card there already. Then we'll tip this up. Moving to the library, there we go. So the library lets me draw three cards from the spell deck, and I can ready one spell, I can ready one additional spell on this turn. Thankfully the astral symbols won't be discarded until I actually go to prep the spell. And then if I have control of the library, I can sacrifice a cultist from the library to ready a spell to ready a spell for no, for no cost whatsoever. Anyway, I think that's all of the locations, and that's everything set up for the game. So let's go ahead and start playing this game. Okay, we'll go ahead and get this game started. So as I mentioned, my green card was largely garbage, so the way you're going to move in this game is you'll discard whatever spell you're using to move. Try to keep them the same, facing the same way. So I'll discard a green to the other world, and I'll move down to the gathering. So first I go through the... So I put a cultist there, and I put an investigator out as well. Then... We roll a die for temporary control, which I will try to do. I'm going to use my green dice tower because the normal dice tower is very imposing. Remember, I need a roll of a Cthulhu here to get control of the location. Which, that is a Cthulhu, so I do get temporary control of the location. So I, may, so I can resolve the control location, so I gain three cultists from the... So I gain three cultists from there, and I'll move one of these to the other worlds. I'll actually move the other one to the other world's location as well. And then I see two greens there, but I can't prepare a spell right now because I don't have the right symbols in my hand. So I'll draw another card, which means I will draw a yellow symbol, and on the back of it will be a dark pact. So with a blue and a white symbol there... I can discard it. I can become cursed to prevent gaining all Elder Signs from a single source. Remember, curses are dangerous in the solo game. Well, they're dangerous in either game, but they're also a ticking clock on the in the solo game. So if I gain five of those, I lose the game. But anyway, that's my first turn. So the investigators now are going to be using a blue symbol from the streets of Arkham to move over to the museum. Mostly just keeping me from doing much of anything there. 
So I do have a blue card in hand. Uh, oh boy. Um, I don't really want to use any of these cards because I want to use the white. <sighs> this is unfortunate. So I guess I might as well just take a turn off. Oh. Might as well just take a turn off using the yellow icon. I'll just use the yellow because that's the least bad spell right now, and I'll move to the streets of Arkham. Fortunately, I don't... Well, I'll put a cultist out and an investigator there. I'm not going to bother rolling for temporary control because the... Because I already have my lodges all clear of, inve of investigators right now. I'm glossing over it in the move step, but if there are three or more investigators already on a location, I would take those and take those investigators into my lodge. But anyway, like I said, my location is currently clear, currently clear of investigators, so I'm not going to worry about anything on that front. But as a spell, I will draw. Another yellow. I'll get a Witch's Curse. So a green and a white to prepare. Choose a cult. That cult becomes cursed. Now a blue and two yellows still isn't letting me do much. So anyway, that will do it for my turn. Now for the investigators, they are going to discard a blue card, but they're already at the, car at the location with a blue symbol on it, so they just move to the other worlds, which means another investigator gets put out. And an investigator would have been put out from when they moved to the museum last turn. So again, they don't do any kind of location action, which makes my life a little bit easier. Now, I still want to keep that white spell. So the only spell I have to use is another blue spell. Which, the stars are right, isn't that great. So I'll use that to move to the museum. And I'll take... I'll put an investigator out and then place an investigator. So fortunately, the check of when, an invest of when the investigators move to your lodge happens before you, place cult before you place a cultist. So because there were two there before, I don't move them to, the to my lodge. The next time I move to the museum, though, I would move again. I would move the cultists over. So that's how that works. Um, I'm not going to bother rolling for temporary control, but I will grab the Skull of Lore. So, as an exhaust, I can roll one die. And on a Cthulhu, I discard it and advance one on my summoning track, but a greater Elder Sign gets me cursed. So, yeah, I will go ahead and exhaust that. We'll bring the dice tower back. I'll put it... I'm going to try to... I'm going to carve out a space in the middle of the... in the abyss where I can put the dice tower. So anyway, I'm rolling this, and I want to see a Cthulhu, but I don't want to see an Elder Sign. I'll replace the artifact in a second. So of course I roll a Greater Elder Sign, which gets me cursed right away. That's unfortunate. But anyway, we'll replace that artifact with... Runic Chalk. While Runic Chalk is in play, increase your spell reserve by one. And I can discard it to ready a spell for free. I may try to go back there and go back and grab that artifact. But anyway, now we'll draw another card. It's a green card, so I want to be able to move. I would want to be able to move there, but I see what's on top. So I find Alter Fate with a yellow and a red is what I would need. I can either reroll up to three of my dice once or one of my dice up to three times. So, mostly, so another case of dice manipulation, but anyway. Green will use, the, the investigators will use the green card to move to the gathering, place another investigator there, and basically run interference on my turn. Ah, uh, this is offensive, but I don't think there's anything I can do about it right now, because the Streets of Arkham doesn't really do much of anything for me right now. Well, I'm not getting anywhere near prepping this spell anyway, so I'm going to discard my Ancient Stirring to move to the Ceremony, which gives me a Cultist and the Temporary... And a Cultist, but i got to check what temporary control, what control of the Ceremony gives me. Sacrifice two, 
Well, I'll think about that while I'm going through my dark gift. So I do get a gate card, which I can use to travel. Also, I should have un I should have prepared my artifact. So we'll bring the... See, starting from the ceremony, proceeding clockwise, roll a die for each cultist I have present there. Or roll a die for a location where I have cultists present. So I can place one cultist from my lodge there and move one investigator to any other location. So we'll start off with the ceremony. So let me place cultist there. So starting from the ceremony, for a tentacle I can place a cultist. Now looking at the streets of Arkham. Okay, that lets me place a cultist as well. Going up to the library. And I will move the... I'll move investigators. I'll move one to the library and I'll move one to the museum. A tentacle lets me put one on the library and I'll move to the streets of Arkham. Then the other worlds, I do have cultists present there, but it's hidden by the dice tower. Which lets me place a cultist there and I'll move one to the library. Then at the museum. Library, at, I don't get to place a cultist at the museum, which is fine. But, yeah, we've definitely got a lot of cultists at the other worlds right now. So, what symbols do I have there? I have a wild, a white, and two green. So, there's not really anything there on prepare right now. So, I'll draw a card. Hopefully, I'll be able to use this to travel. So I've got a green card, and I see what's on top, so it looks like I will be able to travel, but the spell I get here is Confound. So I can, so with a blue and two yellows, I can prepare this. This lets me move all investigators from one location to an adjacent location, or destroy all, all investigators in your lodge. Okay, so that might be potentially handy. Then we'll put a green card out. But since the investigators are already at the gathering, they move to the other worlds. So I'll put an investigator out there. Then moving back to my turn, I'm going to use that green card, as much as I wouldn't mind having extra re-rolls, to move to the ceremony. Which means I do, play, do get those cultists, those investigators on my lodge. I do place, a, place an investigator, or a cultist, and place an investigator. I gain three from the abyss, and I'll move... Well, I'm going to roll for temporary control, because I'm. this might let me... Well, I don't think temporary control here really does anything, because it lets me gain three and move one, so I would just be moving any number, which in this case would be one, so I'll move him... <coughs> excuse me. Straight to the other worlds. And then I have a bunch of, I have three green and a yellow there, but I can't ready anything. So I'll draw a card from the deck. I will draw an ancient stirring. So this one needs three red, which I'll have to keep an eye on that. It was the same thing I discarded earlier to travel there. So that's it for my turn. The investigators We'll use a red card to travel to the library and just block it off. Then this will kind of be a patient play. I'll plan on getting back here at some point, but I'm going to move I'm going to use the gate card to travel, and I'll move to the other world, which will let me place another cultist and an investigator. I have six cultists at the other world to three investigators, so I do have control of that which means I get the control ability, and now I get to try to move advance on my summoning track. So I get to roll six dice, one per cultist. And then for every, for every Cthulhu I roll, I get a cultist back into my lodge, right? Yes. So I've got six dice in here. Tentacle lets me move on the summon track, but they move to the abyss. A Cthulhu brings them back to my lodge.
Oh my. So let's, so that's a four tentacle, two Cthulhu result. So let's move over to the, let's actually take a little break and move over to my god, Haster. So, uh, yeah, that was a beast of a summoning roll result. So we get to move up six on the Fate of the, on the Elder Gods track. So one, two, th on the summoning track. So one, two, three, four, five, six. I get two of my cultists back in the lodge, and then the other four go back to the abyss. So just so you can see how that all works out. But anyway, let's move back over to the board and see if I can prepare a spell. Looking at the symbols that are out at that location, I see I've got a wild, a white, two green, and a red. I wonder if I can use a double, a double, uh, color icon on the location as a wild. Probably not. Ready a spell uh, to cast a spell. Wild icons, great gate cards. Two symbols of the same type cannot be used as a wild card to pay the cost for spells. Okay, so never mind that. That would have made my life a little too easy here. But looking at the symbols, I don't have anything to prepare. So, we'll draw a card from the, a fresh card from the deck. We've got another white card, so we draw a rack. For two blue symbols, I can use this to destroy a cultist from any location or the lodge. And then I will exhaust the skull of... Uh, when can I activate artifacts? I gotta double check that, because I'm not used to having artifacts. So, uh, after the prepare phase of your next turn. Okay, so I will go ahead and do this now. I'll exhaust the Skull of Lore. Hopefully we'll get to advance again on the summoning track. That would be great. I'm going to take one of these Cthulhu's that I rolled earlier. And a lesser elder sign doesn't let me advance, but it doesn't let, but it doesn't make me get cursed again either. So yeah. Anyway, that was my turn. So now the ancient one, or now the investigators are going to move to the streets of Arkham, and I will get raided this time. So let's move back over to Haster to resolve the raid. So the way a raid works in this game is you roll one die per. Cult, you roll one die per investigator in the lodge. A cultist or a tentacle is what I want to see here. A lesser elder sign gives me an elder sign but gets rid of the investigator in addition to what the tentacle and Cthulhu do. A greater elder sign is not a roll I want to see but that, because that gives me an elder sign and leaves the investigators. So here's where I'm hoping for no whammy, no whammy, no whammy. In terms of getting rid of these investigators, I've got five good rolls. I get two Elder Signs and one of the investigators stays. So, we get two of these Elder Signs. That will cover up the nine and the eight. So, now I need to be somewhat careful because now as my, my marker moves up the summoning track, the first time I hit an Elder Sign, whether it's from my advancing into it or their advancing to where I'm at on the summoning track, I get cursed as well. And remember, I've got one toward five and potentially losing the game. So now we'll prepare and move back over to the board. Okay, so... Hmm... So I definitely can't move into yellow. I think we're going to use Confound from the Other Worlds. Uh, yes, we are going to use Confound to move over toward the Gathering, which will let me place a Cultist in at the location and place a and place an Investigator. I'm not going to bother rolling for temporary control. I'll gain three cultists back from the abyss, 
and move that one back to the other world's location. And I see that I've got three green, a wild, and a yellow. So I think we're just going to leave that for the time being, which means I'll draw a fresh spell. We will draw Alhazred's Vengeance. So green, yellow, red to prepare. It's got a white symbol on the back. Reveal when another cult takes an action that places at least one investigator on your lodge. That cult becomes cursed. Utterly useless except for travel purposes, which we might need next turn. So anyway, now the investigators place a green symbol. They try to go to the gathering, but instead they go to the other worlds and I become cursed. So that's my second curse out of five that I would need to lose the game. But anyway, coming back to my turn... I'm going to use that aforementioned Alhazred's Vengeance with a white symbol on the back of it to travel, and I'll move over to the Ceremony, which will let me place a Cultist and, and an Investigator. So I get a Gate card to travel. I should have prepared my Skull of Lore. I get a Gate card, and I will start trying to place my Cultist. So starting at the Ceremony, <clears throat> I'll roll a die. This will let me place a cultist and move a. This will let me place a cultist and move an investigator. Elder sign won't do it at the streets of Arkham. <coughs> nope, the library. Yes, that will let me place a cultist at the library, and I'll move to the gathering I'm probably not going to be going to for a while. Uh, the other worlds, I do have a cultist, but it's hidden. Let me move that a little bit better so you can see there is a cultist there, but it was slightly hidden because of the dice tower. Tentacle lets me place a cultist and move an investigator. We'll move that one to the library. And then the museum. Will also let me place a cultist and move one to the gathering. And then because I have control of the ceremony, I have at least three cultists and more than the investigators. That will let me su sacrifice two cultists to the abyss, which will move me up on the summoning track. It won't give me a... <coughs> It won't give me a curse card yet, because I don't have, because I'm not into that level on the summoning track. But anyway, that will do it for the, that will do it for my turn. So I draw a, actually, can I prepare a spell? I've got a, I've got white, yellow, green there. I could prepare white, yellow, but that's utterly useless, so I'll just draw this card. It's another white symbol, and we find... Enthrall that needs two reds to prepare. So it needs two reds. Choose one location that another cult controls. Destroy two of their cultists from that location. So that's another traveling card. Then they would then the investigators would be trying to move to the would be trying to move on top of the ceremony. So they just stay at the other worlds and I get another curse condition. Which is rather unfortunate, but there's no help for that. Anyway, coming back to my turn, um, hmm, you know what I kind of want to do, actually? I think I'm going to use the two whites at the ceremony as a wild, and I, hmm, yeah, we'll do that. I'll use that to travel to the library, which will let me place a cultist and an investigator. Then I draw three spell cards, and I get to ready one additional spell this turn. So I'll draw three cards from the top of the deck. So my red symbol spell first. There's a transmogrify, with needs a blue and a white. Change any one rolled die to any one face. If the new face is a tentacle or a Cthulhu, become cursed. Our yellow symbol card. 
is Alter Fate, which is another reroll. This one just needs a red and a green to prepare. And a green card with a mind switch. Swap one of your investigate one of your cultists with any one location with any other cultist at a different location. I imagine in the solo game that would work as the um as the investigators. So anyway, I do have control. So I can ready one additional spell this turn because I used the location. And then I can sacrifice a cultist from the library to ready a spell at no additional cost. Which I will sacrifice a... I'll sacrifice a cultist so I can ready my ancient stirring. Which is basically a free two summoning. Which might actually be enough to win the game on the spot once I cast it. And then I get to prepare an additional spell. Actually, yeah, I think... <clears throat> I've just got to check, double-check the timing on when spells can be cast, but... then two red, I can't ready anything with that. So I will draw a card. It's a green symbol, so I draw... Another copy of the Stars are Right. This needs a red and two blue to prepare. But anyway... Um, since I see what's on top, I'm going to double-check when, when spells can be cast. I'm pretty sure... I'm pretty sure it's any time, but don't 100% quote me on that. So to cast a spell, reveal it at any time, performance ability, then discard the spell. So yes, I will cast this right... I readied this spell, so I'll cast it right now. An Ancient Stirring, so I get to advance one on the summoning track, which does hit me with a curse. That's my fourth curse. And I can sacrifice one of my cultists at the current altar location to advance one more on the summon track. So I'll sacrifice another one from the library and advance to the top of the summon track. And we have managed to summon Haster. So I'll bring you back down to the board so you can see that. So as you can see, we were at the seven earlier. I kind of glossed over that a little bit from when we went to the ceremony and had control of it. We were at seven then casting Ancient Stirring let me advance one on the summoning track, which hit me with my fourth curse. And I sac I had cultists at the library to sacrifice. So I gladly sacrificed one to advance to nine. And that means that's going to herald the merger of our world with Lost Carcosa. So that will actually do it for this playthrough of Fate of the Elder Gods. Now, I could throw a second playthrough of this in with a different god. But this actually ties into one of the ideas that I had for how I might use this game on the channel. So one idea that I had was for, for Christmas in Arkham, or another campaign that I've got coming up later this summer, I could potentially use this game as a part of a video tournament over the course of like one or two days to use this game to help me determine which Elder God I play against. So the way that would work is there are several, <clears throat> there are several Elder Gods in this game and Haster is one of them. I'm going to take a quick drink here. Mm. Much better. Anyway, there are several Elder Gods <clears throat> in this game that are also possible to be used for campaigns like Christmas and Arkham. Haster, to the shock of, of probably no one, is one of those gods. So basically the way that tournament would work is I would play this game out as long until either... I would play this game with several of those different gods until each of those gods gets defeated, whether through curses or through... whether through curses or through Elder Signs being sealed away. Or a god gets summoned. So if any gods get summoned, then, the turn, then that tournament would just stop on the spot and we'd play against that Elder God for the campaign. If none of them gets summoned, whichever one gets furthest along the summon track, that's the one I'd play against for for that for Christmas in Arkham or the other campaign where I'm thinking of using this. But I'm not going to get into that now. I'll announce that campaign when we get closer to it. But anyway, I think we are going to have a nice short video because, like I said, this was this was always going to be kind of a test recording of sorts to help me get the feel for put that potentially that use of this game on the channel. But that will do it for this playthrough of Fate of the Elder Gods. Next week, we'll step out of the Cthulhu Mythos and back into the Pandemic System, 
We'll pay another visit to Northrend as we play World of Warcraft Wrath of the Lich King Pandemic. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well, stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.